After making a blockbuster trade that has completely reinvigorated Toronto Raptors fans, Masai Ujiri has actually been taking some heat. No, not really from Raptors fans. No, not from a lot of Knicks fans, even though there's some trolls going around roasting everyone who they can. But no, NBA executives, a couple of front office execs, have actually been grilling Masai Ujiri, particularly for acquiring RJ Barrett in this deal. So we're going to break down the disrespect that has been going on in these latest reports and things along those lines in this vid, because frankly, I think it is madness, and I think it needs to be combated out here on the internet, on the YouTube sphere, whatever the heck this is. But before we dive into that, folks, again, I want to thank everyone who subscribed to the channel as of late and cranking out all the vids. Hit that 31,000 subscriber mark and still over half of our viewers are not subscribed to the channel so it mean the world to me if you guys you know, want to stay up to date with all of the latest Toronto Raptors news to hit that subscribe button but let's dive into what's going on here because again if you've been living under a rock the Raptors trade away OG Ananobi, Precious Achua and Malachi Flynn in return for RJ Barrett as well as Emmanuel Quickly and this deal has been well regarded from both fan bases both fan bases feel like they've gotten a steal feel like it's been a nice sort of acquisition for both sides it might be one of those trades that are win-win even though I like having fun with titles and roasting Chris over a Knicks Digest about how the Toronto Raptors fleeced the New York Knicks but overall at least from the Toronto Raptors side of things the Toronto Raptors perspective it looks like a major W for Masai Ujiri and what it was able, this move was able to do to rebalance the roster, get us some more speed, guard depth without giving up all the valuable aspects that OG Ananobi provides to this team. I mean, RJ quickly proved last night that they're going to be able to sort of hold their own, particularly on the point of attack defense, you know, with on ball coverage at the guard position. So, you know, I broke down a lot of this stuff in recent vids. So, what's really going on? What's new with this trade discussions? Well, Masai Ujiri obviously has been praised a lot over the past 48 hours, particularly because he's come out of hibernation when the Toronto Raptors needed a deal to get done. And, you know, maybe he could have done this earlier. Maybe it wasn't an option. Maybe it wasn't available. But Masai Ujiri completely quieted doubt. The, the doubters and haters were appearing. Even I was throwing some question marks at what Masai Ujiri has been doing over the past couple of years. But he at least made a move. And right now it looks really good. So fans seem to be you know, on his side, but now reports have basically come out uh, saying that this, this is coming, um, recap by Knicks movement, but Zach Lowe is saying that he's revealed that former New York Knicks wing RJ Barrett's contract was viewed as a toxic asset by some anonymous front office members and coaches following the trade to the Toronto Raptors. I've always said that there's a, a continuum of RJ Barrett optimism and pessimism. So, and over here on the pessimistic side, he says, Again, coming from an NBA executive, he just stinks. He's a toxic asset. And that's the word he got thrown around yesterday in his conversations with front office people and coaches. So toxic asset, like you're swallowing the contract. So that's what Zach Lowe said, you know, during his podcast. And frankly, I think that is madness. Again, regardless of what you think about RJ Barrett, regardless if you think, you know, he's star potential or just quality role player, he is a dude that is 23 years old a super athlete that isn't a Ben Simmons in regards to shooting the basketball is one of the best finishers in the entire NBA, whether it be dunking the basketball or what we saw last night, having players just completely bounce off him as he's driving into the lane and be able to finish through contact, get some buckets in the paints. I get it. Some of these analytics heads and nuts look at stats like Vorp and box plus minus and things along those lines and say, Hey, RJ Barrett is really not that valuable of a piece and things along those lines. Well, the Knicks had a weird roster, especially quickly coming off the bench, and those stats can get skewed depending on which ones you're looking at and things there. But frankly, RJ Barrett as a talent at just 23 years old has all the intangibles to potentially grow into a star, and even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't take that leap with the Toronto Raptors that a lot of us were hoping, he's a guy that, again, can make some poor decisions at times, but... It's just an elite bucket getter getting into that paint is a solid enough shooter to where he can't just completely be disrespected and it's just a calming presence it feels like out there on the court. Maybe that's uh, something that will change my mind from you know what I've seen minimal play in the New York Knicks. Don't watch every single New York Knicks game even though I uh, what's called always watch the RJ Barrett highlights and now is one game with the Toronto Raptors the games we saw in Team Canada even though he can be 
you know, explosive. You know, he can make some weird sort of drives. It seems like when he sort of attacks the basket, things all just slow down. And he's a player that can just get you easy shots, easy buckets around the rim. Like, guys like even Pascal Siakam at times, it seems he's be spinning left, right, and center, you know, trying to finish over. And frankly, Pascal Siakam has been remarkable, especially over the past couple of weeks. But RJ Barrett can just get the ball in transition and you know, sprint down that court, speed up the game, and get some buckets in transition. In the half court, he sees that mismatch. He doesn't have to go through a bag of moves in order to get to the rim. He just uses his size, uses his strength, and in the, obviously he's not the player at level of a Jimmy Butler, but in the same way, Jimmy Butler just gets you those easy sort of shots. You make that straight line drive, players bounce off, and you can get that bucket at the rim. R.J. Barrett gets those shots for you. So even if he doesn't develop, he doesn't take his game to the next level, R.J. Barrett is a guy that is currently 23 years old. Again, I'll say it, I'll keep yelling it from the mountaintop, but 18 points per game, four rebounds, 2.4 assists, and solid efficiency from the field. Again, not crazy. He's also an elite free throw shooter, which is great to see. We saw it last night. The Raptors were selling free throw after free throw after free throw at the end of that game, and then R.J. Barrett had the ball in his hands to seal the deal and was clutch for the Toronto Raptors. I mean, R.J. Barrett is a guy to call a toxic asset. I mean, I get it. He's on a decently sized contract, right? 23 25, 27, 29, you know, that's some decently sized numbers. But when you look at the modern NBA, the deals that people are getting here now at this point, that is crazy to say that RJ Barrett is a toxic asset. You could easily, even if we want to go in a different direction, other teams would be willing to pick up a guy that can get you easy buckets, can get you 18 points per game, play solid defense, you know, is athletic, is young. That's not going to be a guy at any point over this contract. Knock on wood that he stays healthy. Obviously, injuries can, compl injuries can completely turn around anyone's career. But RJ Barrett's not going to be a poison pill sort of contract at any point over the course of his Toronto Raptors career. That's all. I might be bold to some people. I might be crazy at some point. This contract especially with the cap rising and everything that's going on it is flat out stupid it is flat out dumb to be roasting Masai Ujiri for acquiring RJ Barrett in a potential deal like this so that's just my take and on top of it we got quickly and a second round pick so again those are assets on its own right that are very valuable to the Toronto Raptors but I gotta back my guy RJ Barrett on this because it's getting disrespectful you know how he's sort of being talked about and Masai Ujiri's by some Knicks fans and now league executives, front office and coaches, you know, about this potential deal going down. But I don't know. The Toronto Raptors last night looked really good. And frankly, it would have been a blowout against the Cleveland Cavaliers if they didn't have guys like you slip in my name. It does, I don't even register some of the three point shooters that they were just hitting after hitting after hitting tough contested shots, you know, especially in the second half of last night's game. I mean, the Raptors played really solid and have me completely pumped up to watch this team face off against some solid competition over the next month or so. So let me know what you guys think about all this Toronto Raptors news that's been going on. Again, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. It means the world to me. Anyways, I'm signing out. Cheers.